All right, this is Geometry, Chapter 7, Section 3, and we are going to be talking about similar triangles. So if we look at the progression that we had um, in our previous information when we were talking about congruent polygons, then we did congruent triangles, and then we had the proving two triangles congruent using side, 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 angle, side, hypotenuse, leg, angle, side, angle, um, and angle, angle, side. So we are following a similar progression here with similar polygons. We proved polygons were similar. Now we're going to prove, um, pull up some easier ways to prove specifically triangles are similar. So um, we're going to take a look at example one together. Triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF. We're going to find all the missing angles. So I'm missing angle B. I'm missing angle C. Uh, I'm missing angle D. So I know that angle A matches up or corresponds to angle D. So I know angle A is 39, so D has to be 39, 39 degrees. Uh, B and E are buddies. E is 90 degrees, so B also has to be 90 degrees. Now we're just missing C. So if B is 90 degrees, A is 39, C would have to be 180 minus 90 minus 39, and that's 51, or the same as, sorry, this should be measure of angle C, 51 degrees. So when you are a similar triangle, all your angles are congruent and all your sides are proportional. That's um, just a review from last one. Angles congruent, sides proportional. That's the definition of similarity. So we're going to take a shortcut with triangles. When we have a tri when we have two triangles, we only have to prove that two of the angles are congruent, and then we have proven them similar. Because if, if all the angles in a triangle add up to 180, and two of them are already congruent, then that third one also has to be congruent. So when you're asked to prove that a triangle is similar, all you have to do is show that two of the, the corresponding angles are congruent, and then you're good to go. So in this case, if S and M are congruent, and R and L are congruent, we can say that angle or triangle SRT is similar to triangle MLP. I like similar triangles because unlike congruent triangles where we could not use angle, 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 here we can use angle, angle. And we don't even need the third angle. All right, we're going to look at these couple of examples and we're going to determine whether the triangles are similar. So we have two triangles here. We have this giant one, WYZ. <coughs> And we have this baby one, VWX. Uh, so it's VWX. For this green triangle, we have a 90 degree angle here. And for the blue triangle, he also has a 90 degree angle here at Z. So we know that uh, angle Z is congruent to angle V. That's one angle. Which other angle can we show congruent, Madeline? W. W. They both share W. So angle W is congruent to angle W. So two angles are congruent, so we can say that they are similar by angle angle similarity. So um we use AA and then the tilde to represent angle angle similarity. Because it wouldn't be math if you didn't um, abbreviate things and never write them out all, all the way. Like CP, CTC. Okay. Look at these 
these little black marks here. Boy, it's been a few weeks since we have seen that. We're just coming back from winter break, so what do these two little, what do these little guys mean here so on this triangle? Jack? They're, they're parallel. So the ones that have the two arrows, so like this green guy here and this green guy here, those are parallel. And the one that only has the one, those are parallel. So what do we know about parallel lines? They never touch. They never touch, and what do they create if you have a transversal? Oh, uh, angle relationships, yeah. So we got some congruent angle relationships that are um, produced by having parallel lines. So if I have, um, if I just look at the blue, I can see that I have uh, this blue line here and okay so if we use this line as our transversal then we can see that this angle here corresponds to this angle here do you see that black and then we can say that this angle here corresponds to this angle here. So by using corresponding angles and parallel lines, we can um, identify two angles that are congruent. Okay, flip the page. All right, we have two bow ties. Anytime we have a bow tie, what kind of angles are going to be produced? Vertical. Vertical. So let's go ahead and before I even touch anything, let's go ahead and put our vertical angles on here. Anytime you have a bow tie, you're going to have vertical angles. And I want you guys to be able to spell vertical correctly. It's C A L. C A L. I put the California in vertical. Um, so, given this information, we're going to see if we can prove the triangles congruent. They both have a 90 degree angle and they both have vertical angles. So, this one is similar angle angle. Um, I'm going to go ahead and throw down the proportion um, because we have to solve for x. So one thing I don't like is um, I don't like how, um, oh, actually, I'm okay with this. Um, I, I, so instead of, the, the pictures kind of make my brain kooky because they're not oriented the same. This little guy is not sitting in the same orientation as his big brother over here. Um, so to organize my information, I always go, this is the long side, this is the medium side, and this is the short side. And then I identify that on my other shape. This is my long side, this is my short side, and this is my medium side. Because I'm going to have to set up proportions and I have three different options, long, short, or medium, in which to do it, I want to make sure um, I identify everything correctly. Okay, so these are similar by angle-angle similarity because we have the vertical angles and the 90-degree angles, so check. And now we're going to solve for x. So x, um, for our big guy, he's short over long. And I want to make sure he equals short over long. So when you're set, setting up your proportions, it's super important you know who goes together. Then we're going to go cross multiply. Um, would you please permit me to reduce this before I multiply? You guys okay with that? Yeah. Okay, thank you for your permission. Instead of six, I'm going to divide 
both 6 and 15 by 3. So instead of 6, I'm going to use 2. And instead of 15, I'm going to use 5. So I'm going to use 2 and 5. So 2 times 20 is 40. And I have 5x. When you simplify your fraction, it just makes your multiplication easier. Divide both sides by 5, and x is equal to 8. All right, same kind of deal over here. We have our, so we'll call this our long side, our medium side, and our short side. We need to just double check, do we have two pairs of congruent angles? Yes. And then the vertical. So we know that these are congruent by angle, angle. They're similar, Con not congruent. Oh, sorry, they're similar. I wrote it right, I said it wrong. Similar by angle, angle similarities. And then, so this guy, X, is the medium side. And I just did a double check. Check out who is across from your 65 degrees, the medium side. So when you look at this 65, since they are similar triangles, the medium side also needs to be across from the 65, which means that the short side is across here and the long side is here. So I need to solve for x. I only have medium and short. So I'm going to go x over 25 is equal to the medium side over the short side over here. And if you guys will permit me to reduce 45 over 35, do I have your permission to do that? Yes. Before I multiply, because I don't want to multiply 25 and 45. My brain is tiny and I can't tolerate that. So I'm going to divide each of these by 5. 45 divided by 5 is 9. And 35 divided by 5 is 7. So then when I cross multiply, I get 7x. And um, I know that 9 times 25, well, no, 8 times 25 is 200 because 8 quarters is $2. So 9 times 25 has to be $2.25. A little mental math for you guys. I love quarters. Although by the time you guys have children or grandchildren, there might not be any quarters. So we divide both sides by um, 7. And just like in cooking shows, um, we're just going to pull this out of the oven and not even and just pretend like we didn't already calculate this to begin with. 225 divided by 7 is 32.1. We've reduced the cooking time. Okay. So this next page is going to end the reign of angle-angle similarity as our only similarity theorem that we have access to. So sorry. Angle, angle, similarity, your reign is over. All right, so theorem 7-2 says if I have an angle of one triangle that's congruent to an angle of a second triangle and the lengths of the sides including these angles are proportional, then we can show that the triangles are similar. So this is called side angle side. It's, but I have to, the other sides that are on each side of the angle are the ones that have to be proportional. And then theorem 7-3 says, if all the sides are proportional, then the two triangles are similar. So we're going to do a little exercise in... Um, figuring this shenanigans out. We don't have any information about the angles, so what are we going to target for these three triangles? Side, side, side is our target. So let's we'll target. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just take a half second, 
label it short, medium, long for each triangle. So I, because they, they're all oriented crazy. So long, middle, short, long, medium, short, long, medium, short. So just a quick way to make sure when you get rolling through this process, you're not um, getting lost in um, having your proportion incorrect. Okay, so let's take a look at how ABC is related to DEF. So let's do uh, long to me. Let's do long to medium. Sorry. And make sure it's equal to their long to medium. So what is the, when I reduce 12 ninths, what do I get? Three four. So four. Three. four. <coughs> Thirds, and when I reduce eight sixths, we'll cut it in half. We also get four thirds. So the proportion from long to medium is four thirds. Yay! Same thing. Sorry, I want to write this in a little bit different way. It's going to end up being, the end result will end up being um, agreeable. So long to long, so 12 to 8, so I'll do long to long, and medium to medium, so that's 9 to 6. So the long sides, um, it should be proportional to the medium sides. So if I have 12 over 8, that reduces 2. Well, 4 goes into 12 three times, and it goes into 8 twice. Okay. Uh, 3 goes into 9 three times, and it goes into 6 twice. So I'm still proportional. I just want to make sure it's long side to long side, uh, medium side to medium side. Yeah. I'm with you. And then let's do... Uh, Short side to short side. Make sure it's the same. So six to four. And hopefully, if that's equal to three halves, then these two triangles are similar by the side 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 similarity. Okay, so A, B, and C. is similar to triangle F, E, D. By side, side, side similarity. All right, so let's take a look at how D, E, F is related to triangle G, H, I. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to do, let's do the long sides. Make sure it's equal to the proportion of the medium sides. Make sure that's equal to the proportion of the short sides. All right, let's reduce all these down. Remember in fifth grade when we practiced reducing fractions and you're like, where are we going to use this? Oh, five years later in geometry. Here we go. I know, it's worth the wait. So I'm going to cut each of these in half to get four sevenths. <clears throat> cut six tenths in half to get uh, three fifths. And cut four sixths in half to get two thirds. None, none of these are equal. So it's not, not similar. 
not similar. Not proportional. Okay. So, um, we have two similar triangles living inside this one shape. Well, we're going to show if it's similar. So, we have the big guy. And the big guy has a side length not of 12 or 4, but 12 plus 4, which is 16. And his other side length from S to T is not 5 or 15, but it's 5 plus 15, which is 20. And we know no information about the bottom side. Okay, so we are, we don't have the last side, so we're not going to try for side, side, side. We know that they share angle S. So we're going to try side, angle, side. So we want to show that 16 over 4 is equal to 20 over 5. So 16 over 4 is 20 over 5. So it's like the medium size equal the long side proportion. Let's go ahead and reduce these down. I'm going to divide 16 by 4 to get 4 and 4 by 4 to get 1. I'm going to divide 20 by 5 to get 4 and 5 by 5 to get 1. Amazing. 4 over 1 is equal to 4 over 1. So I can say that triangle RSC is similar to triangle PSQ by side angle side similarity. All right, so let's look at our final example here. On this page, final example on this page. We have A and B are 72 and 41. E and F are 72 and 67. Do I have any information on this side? No. So I'm going to shoot for angle angle similarity. That's where I'm going to go. So um, we can, let's do uh, find angle C and find angle D. And hopefully they will, it doesn't matter, but it will take moments to find both of them. And then we can visually see how they're related. So angle C is 180 minus 72 minus 41 or 67 degrees and then angle D is or you could do angle D which is 180 minus 72 minus 67 which is 41. So we can say that this is triangles of BCA is similar to triangle DEF by angle angle. Quick, we're just going to do 28 together because it's on our practice for um, 7 3, so it's important. So find a little space where we can do this together. This is as hard as it's going to get. So let's put a statement and a reason. 
Let's put all our givens down. We are given that AB is parallel to CD and BC is parallel to DG. Thankfully, that is just given to us. All right, so we are going to declare that angle A is congruent to angle DCG. For the same reason as we had in our previous example, um, I have two parallel lines and a transversal, and A and C are corresponding angles. So I have that angle, and I have no information on side length, so I'm really going to um, shoot to get all the angles congruent. So let's say that angle ACB, so this one right here, is congruent to angle G. Because when I have two parallel lines and a transversal, C and G are corresponding angles. Yeah. All right, number three. So I have an angle and an angle congruent. So let's go ahead and declare. You mean four? Oh, thank you. I um, squished two and three in the same, underneath both two, and then I separated them out here. So triangle ABC is similar to triangle CDG. By angle angle similarity. This is good. This is where the mind gets blown. This is where it just blows right up. Okay, so look at where we want to be. We want to be that side AB times side CG equals CD times AC. And from here, it's like, what? How is that even possible? So if we then say proportionally, so let me. Clear off this crazy picture. So we've proven that these two triangles are similar. So we know that AB, this side here, over CD has got to be equal to AC. over CG. And what's that? Uh, so this is corresponding sides of similar triangles are proportional. It's part of the def you can you can even put definition of similar triangles. Okay, this is it. This is where we're wrapping this up. What property do we use to say AB times CG is equal to AC times CD? What property is that? Where we multiply uh-huh so it's the cross product property we did it in um seven one
Beautiful. 